What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? How you guys doing? It's Ghost. You know who I am. My boy K6. We're over here just drinking some beers, doing some some bike talk. We're talking about bikes. We're gonna talk about the R1 versus H2. We're gonna talk about some real bikes. <laughs> We're gonna talk about some of the differences in, in in between the R1 and the R2, and not only because R1, R2. Oh shit! I did say it. Oh. Yeah, R1. That's yeah, only your second. Yeah, beer. you shut up. <laughs> <laughs> the R1 and the H2, okay? The R1 and the H2, but not only the differences between the R1 and the H2, but like a different perspective from someone that doesn't ride them all the time, that you know rides them once in a while, to someone that lives with them and owns them and rides them all the time. Thought that'd be kind of cool. So that's what we're doing today. So if you're interested in the H2 or you're interested in the R1, then uh, yeah, stick around. Or if you're just interested in. Watching us sit around and talk and drink beers, you are definitely is, in the right place. Yeah, you are definitely in the right place. So, cheers. You fucked that up. You fucked that up. That's cool. You, you, you took too long to drink your drink. I wasn't, I wasn't thirsty at that moment, but you know, you know what? I got jealous when I saw you drinking. You and I was like, you know, maybe I should drink some too. Yeah, let's stick around. <laughs> yeah. like, I, need, I need a nap. Oh yeah. Hey, hey. Cheers. Mm. Thanks, sir. Looks a little crooked, but you know what? You guys are good. You guys, you guys are good where you are. You could always like. I can always adjust it in video. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. From a perspective of someone that just rides them once in a while, like I've ridden the R the R one. I think I've ridden the water one like almost a thousand miles since I've since I mean I've, I borrowed it for well you took the GSX and then I rode the R1 for like two weeks yeah, it was probably closer to a month to a month but then I think I had the I had the bike didn't I have my Daytona in the shop or something and I borrowed the R1 for a little bit or oh that was that was last year like right right around SEMM time yeah so I, I've I've ridden the R1 quite a bit so I felt I'm pretty confident and comfortable on the R1 in terms of like the clutch and I mean it's a little tall for me. You gotta wear your big boy boots. Yeah I gotta wear my big boy boots. <laughs> we don't talk about that. <laughs> but but the H2 I've only ridden a handful of times less to, less than 100 miles. That shit not even that. It's a well today it's, a, it's about today was probably about 40 miles. No. How, how many uh, miles did Belmont? Or from, uh, like from, fucking Belmont Park. From Belmont Park to 15 because from from here to my job my old job is 15 miles and from my old job to Belmont it's like an extra five to seven so really it was only about 15 to 20 miles one way though that's what I'm saying so yeah. today we did about 30 to 40 miles and then the first time I think we rolled 10 miles maybe because we went over here oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so, so that's what I'm saying like 50 miles that's less than 100 miles okay right. way less than 100 miles Right, but um, anyway, so I thought it'd be cool to have a conversation, just talk about the difference between like a normal super sport versus H2 from a perspective of someone that just rides them once in a while to someone that rides them all the time, used to ride them all the time. <laughs> I, don't, I don't ride that much anymore. Anymore. I'm getting old, man, and, and priorities and working from home. Yeah, anyway, so uh, yeah, so from my perspective, and then, I mean, I'll bring up a couple things that I noticed between the two bikes and then maybe see what your th thoughts are. Okay. Um, is, you know, from from the R1 to the H2, I feel like the biggest thing for me is the R1's power delivery feels like really raw. Like, it just feels like really raw power. Like, you give it the throttle, it fucking roars, and it's just like, go. Where the H2, uh, it still roars, and it goes faster and much more responsive, but it feels super smooth. The power delivery, it's hard. I can't say that it's like a raw power delivery. It definitely feels more like it's computer, okay. computer provided um, power delivery. It's more refined. It's very refined. It's super smooth to me. Like when I, especially I like how we, you know, when we got here, I was able to switch. You know, I can really tell like, yeah, the power delivery, you can tell it's definitely a lot of computer going on in that thing and it gives you the power you hear the roar and you go and you throws you to the back of the seat but it's just really smooth like it just felt 
I don't know. It's hard to describe. It's just super smooth. That, that's one of the, the differences I've seen between the R1 and, and, and the H2. Uh, one thing that I, I noticed about this bike, just sticking around between the two, is that even though the, the R1 and the H2 both have electronics, and you can tell that the R1 utilizes a lot more of the electronics than I think the H2 does. Really? Yeah, because it's it's very simple. Like with the R1, you can dial this thing in exactly the way that you want it. It's got everything, but the H2 only has trash control, uh, an engine brake control, and one one ABS? other thing. Yeah, ABS and something else. Like there's only like three I, or four. I things. feel like I feel like your H2 was way more controlled by the computer than the R1. Uh, maybe maybe the the throttle response. Okay. Um, yeah. But it, I mean, it's not. It's not a. It's not a fly by wire. Like it has an actual like. Yeah. Like throttle. So like a cable. So like, and the reason I say that, like first gear on the on the H two, like the first gear on the R one, I have it, no problem. But it's first gear on the H two is so weird, man. Like, I was having a lot of problems with the clutch and the throttle, and like I felt like I would. Try, I tried to let the clutch out, but it, it would get to a point where I could feel like, okay, that's too much clutch. I could feel the stuttering, you know, starting. Okay. And, and I was giving the throttle and nowhere. I wasn't going you, anywhere. You should put a little piece of that in here, because especially leaving Belmont Park, I could hear you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I'll put that in so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But like, I'm telling you, man. That's, oh God, damn. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Just trying to get that first gear. I'm releasing the throttle, the clutch. I just don't feel it engaging. And, and I'm like at the point where I can feel the engine start kind of go, da, 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 da. and I'm giving it gas, but at the same time, I feel like I have to give it a lot of gas. But then the problem is, is that it's like, it's like, this is the, the throttle right here, man. You go there, you're good. And then all of a sudden you go a little more, it's like, and it's like going crazy. So I was having problems like, so there was a point when we were leaving where I was saying, you took off and I was going to go and I wasn't going anywhere. You still I, was going, I wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> And the car was pulling out. I was like, yeah, yeah, you go. No, you go, you go. I'll, I'll, I'll go after you, you know? <laughs> but it's because it's really weird. Um, so it's just something I noticed. It was really different. It yeah. takes getting used to. It takes a lot of getting used to. And I, even, even I still, like, every once in a while, I'm like, oh, what? Well, it, and, uh, it, it, once you get it, like that first gear. You get, yeah, you get. Yeah, because anytime we stopped, I was like that. I was like, oh, man, this is really weird. And, and it could be a lot of, like, nervousness of, like, just knowing that there's so much power here. Like you don't want to overdo it, you know. Um, but it was just weird for me. I don't know. That's something I noticed. It was kind of. And on the R1, I didn't, I didn't feel that. And I mean, the R1 has over 200 horsepower, right? It's 190. So it's close. Wheel. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't well, say it's close. So R2 has like 230. Somewhere in there. It's, yeah. It's debatable because I tuned on two different dynos. So honestly, I really don't know. But it's somewhere in the 220. I don't know. That was something. That was. It's that way, was, it's way was, more power than anybody really needs. Like that, well, yeah, definitely, definitely way more power than anyone needs. But I feel like that was the, that was where the, I was really nervous more than anything. It's in that first gear. Once I was like, once we were riding and we were on the freeway, it was I felt comfortable. Like, um, you're, you know, I felt like it was any other bike other than the, the power. Like it was like crazy power. But I wasn't like worrying about the throttle. You know, shifting gears. I will say your 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 auto blipper up and down much smoother than the daytona mm -hmm. like down is really nice like a mine on the daytona i mean i haven't really tried it as like i was doing today but it feels more clunky yours is really smooth going even going down um i would say i even though the r1 has an up uh, i never started using it until i got the h2 and realized how much fun it was. it's nice here yeah. it's so nice yeah it, it, yeah i i barely use the clutch anymore <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, you have up and down, so it's like, you don't necessarily need to, yeah, so. Especially like, you, like you're like you going down from like, say like six to four. It's nice. Yeah. It's nice. Oh yeah, that was cool. Ah, oh, damn. That thing pulls so hard. That's another thing, man. That, that bike just pulls so hard. And, and you don't even notice it, though. Like, you can't... Like, you feel the power, and you're like, oh, shit, this is a lot of power. But it's not uncomfortable. Like, I, that's where I think... where That's what I'm saying when I feel like the power delivery is smooth. Because even if you, you go, it's like... It's not uncomfortable. Like, you don't realize how fast 
you're going from A to B. You you were doing like what I call the, the bitch throttle, you know. I wasn't even opening up. That's the thing. <laughs> you're right. I mean, I mean, uh, and I, I, I think I, I hit like 130, 140, but like I ain't trying. I ain't trying to like go crazy. And that, but that's the crazy thing is, you're right. I didn't even like open it up. Like, and I, I do the same thing. Like I ride the same way because if you give it more than like that, like, it'll keep giving. It'll 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 go, and it's it, the power feels like it's instant. Yeah, it is. It's 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 there. That that's for sure. It's such a it's such a crazy experience to, that's to ride that volume. I think that's what's different that I my experience from like the ZX fourteen and the boosts is even though the, the, the power is all there, I feel like they that it's that a bike, gradual it's power. A, it's a very gradual. Yeah, power. yeah. Uh, Where this is just like you know. I mean, I, I was kind of I was pulling on you, and I wasn't full throttling that I thing. Could, I couldn't. I couldn't. Keep so it. I tried. <laughs> well, there was that one. The fr well, the first time. There was a one time when you were like staying there, but I wasn't even opening it up. Like I barely was cracking it open, and there was just too many cars. Yeah, you know, that was a problem. We were riding. There was just there was just too many cars out today. Yeah. Until we got on the the toll road, and then it kind of opened up, and I was like, okay, less cars, I can fucking I can yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, that, that that was insane, man. That was fun. That was cool. Like to have that experience. Yeah, I tried to look in your mirrors and I like see you like way back there. I was like, okay. Yeah. Like, okay, this thing's going. I'll catch up. I know where we're going. <laughs> yeah, I know where we're going exactly. So, but yeah, man, that was fun, dude. I, I appreciate it. That's like, and you know, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of trust in general when you let someone ride your bike. Mm. But then when you let someone ride the bike like that, like that's a whole nother level. Like, cheers. And also, I felt I felt the ergonomics on the H2 were way more comfortable than the R1. So exactly. one one on this R1, I have to I can't flat foot it, and I, uh, with the I, I'm kind of I'm not <clears throat> I'm not tippy tippy towing it, but like I can't flat foot it. Yeah, yeah. But on the H2, I could flat foot. It. It's much lower, and then the seating position I felt was less aggressive. Like the normal seating position, like if you were just getting on it and riding. I felt it was less aggressive, but of course, like once you know you're like, all right, I'm gonna get on it. You you can sit back and put your ass in that little, that, that little, little cubby nook. hole, That's that little right. nook, yeah. And you and you feel planted, like you feel really planted, like it's comfortable where you know you're not gonna slide back on the bike. Um, but it felt like the ergonomic for me. I thought the ergonomics felt a little more comfortable on the H2. Your seat was harder. It is compared to the to the R1 yet. Yeah, yeah. even, with, even with the gel, it's, it's that's is that the uh, Louis Moto? That's the Louis Moto one. Yeah, yeah. yeah even with the gel, like, it felt well, harder. That compared to the stock seat is softer. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess you're right because you're comparing like cords, where like the whole thing is like the cord fucking yeah, nice two inches, foam. three inches memory foam for your ass. Where this only has that little pad of gel. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's like a quarter of an inch thick or something. Yeah, like that. but it looked good. I mean, but yeah, you could. The seat is definitely. But I mean, that's all custom, right? Like, you have two custom seats, so that's kind of hard to. If compare. I could, get, if I could get a Corbin seat for that bike, you know, I don't even think I would. I wouldn't. No. I like I, how I, that layout yeah. looks. It looks really it's, good. It's not. It's not uncomfortable, and I've done what three hundred, yeah. four hundred. I don't think it's uncomfortable. I mean, yeah, I don't think it's uncomfortable. I like I said, I felt like the ergonomics were a little bit better. Um, I felt that the the the, um, the bars were a little smoother for me on the H2 for some reason. Like I felt like like they just wanted to move. Like you just give it a little bit and they move. Or with the R1, you kind of have to command it. Like all right, you're going this way and you kind of turn it. See, and I, if they both feel planted, I feel the opposite. Really? Yeah. Like whenever I hop, like, ride the H2 like, and then hop on the R1, like I automatically feel like whoa, like this thing just wants to like. Really? Yeah. Like I okay. can just dip into anything. I, well, that's what I mean. I was kind of impressed that the H2 felt like that to me. Um, but also, I didn't stall his either any of his bikes today, where he stalled his R1 three times. Why are you bring bullshit? I did. I, I stalled the R1 like three times. It's, it's true. It's true. The H2 sounds crazy when you're on it. Like from 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 riding with you, I don't hear the blow off valve as often. Like I hear it like le like not as often, but. Riding it, it's like always going. Yeah, 
when but you don't when you're from the side like when you're next to you you don't hear the blow up valve like constantly going off it's only when you're like really get on it and then you hear it yeah and then you really get on it and you hear it. but when you're like on the bike and you're riding you hear it. it's like constantly it's constantly like as soon as you let off it's a little like the entire and that's why i was like okay that's different because yeah like i said when i'm riding next to you i don't hear it constantly it's only when you like get on it and you get and then you let go that you hear it but riding it you hear it i thought time. that was going to be super annoying it's like, not too bad no when i when i when i was installing it i'm thinking in my head like like the constant like psh, 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 is going to be annoying and, and it's not like yeah i don't i don't think that it is I don't think that it is at all. It's not like an overbearing sound. Probably. Yeah. It's, yeah. So, anyway, that's kind of all we want to talk about. Is like I wanted to bring in bring in some experience from someone that doesn't ride these bikes that often. These super like one thousand liter bikes to someone that rides them every day or almost every day uh, and has more, you know, and kind of give that difference and like see where see what we're looking at. What's different? I think there's a couple things different that maybe I noticed. That, it could be that you're just so used to it that I'm not seeing that I feel the difference right off the bat where you're just used to riding these bikes all the time. So we gotta find somebody with a Ducati. I really want to ride a people board. That would be nice. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we could find somebody that's got one. Who got one? Who got one? I think I know somebody in LA that's got one, but that's a long trip. Yeah, that's a long trip. Yeah. Right. Anyways, that's all we wanted to talk about. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. The conversation is kind of interesting. I'm trying to look into some. You know, just some raw conversation about these two bikes and the H2, and um, there's a lot of videos out there on H2s, and but I haven't seen anyone really kind of delve into this portion of, you know, trying to talk about the differences between a normal 1000 and, and the H2. So uh, you kind of get two perspectives of someone that just rides them once in a while versus someone that rides them all the time, and basically lives with them, right? So uh, I thought that'd be kind of cool, but. It's a good comparison, I think, right? It brings different mindsets into yeah. it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Um, make sure to go check out K6. If you guys want to watch any more videos about the R1 if you guys, or even H2, he's got a bunch of stuff on there. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. It was a fun day. And uh, until next time, peace. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Do you it. know, it helps out the channel. Do it. Do it. Do it now. <laughs> Do it now. <laughs> It helps out the channel. Uh, definitely helps out with, uh, you know, letting you know when I have new videos and stuff like that. So I appreciate it. And if you're here sticking around and you're still watching the video, I appreciate you. Yeah, you. you. I'm talking to you. Yeah, it's a little hard. I appreciate you. <laughs> Anyways, until next time, peace.